And we are back. Uh, bonjour ou rebonjour, uh, mes amis. Hi, guys. Uh, we are back with Johnny Guitar. This time we're talking Chuda. Chuda. Pedagos FXD. Now, Johnny here, as you know, is uh, well versed into the uh, Tudor submariners and uh, the, the history and uh, the quality of the pieces of the past. So why did you choose to pick up the, the brand new one? Um, just when it came out, I just thought it was very, very interesting. You know, it's, it's not so much the affiliation with the Marine Nationale and all that. I mean, what you have on in your hand, in your right hand, is, is an actual uh, issued watch to the uh, Marine Nationale, which has a stamping MN80, because that's when it was issued to um, to, uh, I think it was in Lorient. It was one of the three bases yeah. where it was issued together with the Brest and Toulon. Um, so you know, there's there, there's an affiliation there, and I thought thought it was kind of cool to to get something that was kind of like the Descendant, but really just because I thought it was quirky and and interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, and I and when I came out with that, I I was actually quite excited. I'm like. This is this is a little bit left field. Like nobody asked them to to do this. You know, I don't yeah. I don't think that in the top twenty <laughs> list of you know wishes that anyone would have had um, from Tudor would have been a, a watch with a fixed, you know, with fixed lugs and you know a weird be bezel which is a countdown and uh, you know uh, these kind of stuff. Um, and it was actually quite controversial when it came out because some people were saying. Well, you know, what's the point of this watch if you can't even make a, put a bracelet on it? And you're like, yeah, you're, you're missing the point there, mate. The, the, <laughs> the point is that you can't put a bracelet. And if you want one with a bracelet, well, guess what? There is a, a, a Tudor uh, Pelagos with, with a bracelet. So you can go and get that instead. And full disclosure, I used to own the first version of the, uh, the Tudor Pelagos. I had it between 2000 and... Uh, 12 and 2014 so the one with the ETA base movement mm -hmm. uh, inside black uh, dial which I thought was was a great uh, watch it was in, in my view what what a what a modern sea dweller would look like you know without the fuss without the, the shiny bits that Rolex has put since then for me don't listen darling that, don't don't listen to him darling you're yeah. beautiful yeah exactly. you're gorgeous yeah yeah it's just a gorgeous piece of jewelry um, mm. so man jewelry uh, so yeah, the the the, the Pelagos is a, is a lot more stern, you know. It's in titanium, uh, and I really enjoyed it, uh, except for the fact that I, at that time, I found it a little bit thick. So it's a, it was like a fourteen point three millimeters. So that was the uh, yeah. the ETA version. When they did the one with their own in-house movement, it uh, it gained a half millimeter to fourteen seven, fourteen point eight. So anyway, even at fourteen point three, it was already a bit too too, too bulky for my uh, for my taste. It was cool though already with the LHD. That was nice as well. The LHD is really really nice yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. The, I hesitated about it's it's it's, it's 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 it, they're, they're nice watches and and they're 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 very you know if you want something that that looks a bit technical that's very competent. Mm. One of my friends from a, from a watch uh, forum is uh, is an avid diver. Like he spends all of his vacation diving like for the past 20 or 30 years. I don't know how many thousands of dives he has. And he's had literally everything in terms of, uh, of, of dive watches because he's a, he's a watch guy. And um, he's had, by the way, the, 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 the deep sea, the first version of the deep sea. Yeah. And he's a big guy, right? So he's got like 90, 90 and a half centimeters wrist. So he's one of the few guys who, who can actually get away with wearing that kind of stuff. But he, he sold it because he said, look, uh, the, the 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 big ratcheting system that you're supposed to be having in the in the bracelet it like failed on him a couple of times so he mm. said okay done um, and he's a huge Seiko fan so he he typically dives with a, I think his favorite watch from Seiko is either a Seiko Tuna or a Marine Master 600 you know the one with the spring drive inside and, oh, yeah. and, and, uh, and uh, power wow. reserve which is super thick like, so like cool 70 watch. millimeters yeah yeah so so it's it's a it's a it's a it's a monster right it's a, it's also in titanium uh but he, he dives a lot with that that one sometimes i see it in the shop I always, i'm always wondering what the hell is that what a cool piece spring drive what 
that. You know, it's it's, it's really people nice. forget about that money easily. Yeah, it's such a cool piece. And uh, he uh, and also the uh, the Tudor Pelagos, which he he thinks is one of the most practical bracelet because you know you've got like this spring loaded bracelet. Uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the traditional pelagos, yeah, uh, you know he's, he's got a lot of things that he likes in uh, in the, in this watch, and he's he's uh, he's used it uh, a lot, and I know he was also a little bit interested in this one because, uh, you know, for him what this watch did, yeah, that this is Junior uh, expressing himself. Uh, he wants a watch. He, well, you're holding his watch. There you go. So so yeah. So, oh, because so, of the the date. He was yeah, born in 22, he, right? He was born in 2022. This is uh, this has a marking MN22 at the back. Yeah. So that will be his. You know when he turns. You should have 18. called him uh, Mark MN. What could it be? You should have called him uh, Mario. <laughs> My, Mario Nebulo. Mario um, Nebulo. But uh, no, is um, I, I will even have his. Um, Mark Nestor. His. Uh, Initials and, and date of birth and grade uh, somewhere on the on the back as well, and and that will be in his watch. So, I, I this is actually my I son's watch. I think he watch. disagrees. I think he he wants he the wants he wants the Vacheron. He wants the Vacheron. <laughs> he wants the Vacheron. Uh, but I have it I have it uh, on loan for the next uh, seventeen years, and then he'll be he'll be wearing that. But, Things uh, watch guys tell themselves to buy a watch. Exactly. You know, I'm I'm like, but you know. Having a having a child is a, is quite a, a momentous moment in anyone's life, and you know, and yes, we need excuses to pass ourselves watches. But I was like, you know, I'd I'd like to buy something that was made the same year he was born, uh, and be able to give it give that to 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 him as a bit of bit, piece of heirloom. Mm -hmm. I just thought the idea, uh, I like the idea of uh, of that. Um, doesn't mean that I'm not wearing it in the in the meantime, obviously. And it happens to be a good watch. And it happens oh. to be a very good watch. So what what my friend likes about this one is the fact that they've uh, elongated the um, the minute hand, and the minute hand is much closer to the bezel than on the um, on the on the previous right. iterations. Uh, so that's one of his pet peeves. He likes the fact that the bezel is graduated uh, entirely for every minute, except you know the parts that are missing because when it's uh, you know at forty, for instance, it's only three markers because. The, the 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 numbers to take a yeah a I've always space. wondered about about that also on the yeah the seat, whether it's, it's a bit uneven but the, there's but four there's three yeah but at least you you got you got most of them uh, one of his yeah. pet peeves being a diver is why do you stop after fifteen you know a lot of the watches you just don't have uh, like typically that that doesn't uh, you know that doesn't have uh, uh, that doesn't have the minutes after after 15 so oh terrible the, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you are so you know after the 15 minutes you know right. it's five if it's, it's, it's five to five well, it was made in a different time or so yeah yeah it's sure just, uh, uh, but uh, except for the fact that i think that the seikos always always have had that um, so anyway as an avid diver that's one of the things that uh, that's one what's one of his pet peeves on the previous model you know what i'm going to ask what he thinks about Left and right. Oh, the fact that it doesn't uh, ratchet. No, the uh, fact that it goes left and right, that you can go right as well. For him, that's, uh, it's of no consequence whatsoever. No. In the way that he dives, he says, "Look, he, he, you, it, it would take, it would take quite a big knock to to uh, to, uh, to 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 knock it out of place." You know? Yeah, you can turn it, but it's not like it's it's super easy. Yeah. You still need. I'm to glad to hear that because it's so much more practical. Yeah. Yeah. But again, you know, there's there's a bit of debate, and I've I've heard both sides of the of the argument from from people who are diving. Some are saying no, you really need that, and some others who are saying, look, it's really not, it's really not a big deal, uh, because at the end of the day, you know, nobody actually relies on this for uh, to to dive. You know, they have a, they have a um, they have a dive computer. And if anything at all, they dive with it because they're watch guys and they like it. Or maybe you know to have a redundant system in case the the, the computer mm, fails. But uh, but it's, yeah, it's a very smooth turning bezel. Very smooth. It's very nice. What one of the other things that it turns done, easy and it yeah. turns smooth, what but not too easy, of course. They've actually enlarged the the, the the bezel a bit. It sticks out more than on the uh, the LHD or the original model. Right. Uh, you can see that it, it sticks out the best part of one millimeter. Uh, Quite a lot, yeah. So what what is interesting about this watch, and I don't know, you put it on your wrist and you tell me if you if you think the same. Uh, 
the way that they say is like, yeah, it's a it's a 42 millimeters watch, but I don't really feel like it's 42. It's 42 at the bezel or at the case? Actually, people who have who have measured it, it's 42 and a half at the at the widest point of the bezel, but the case itself is somewhere between 40 and a half and 41 millimeters. Right. So uh, it actually. It, I don't feel it was particularly big for a 42mm uh, for 42 mm watch. Now, we're going to talk about straps in a minute, but quickly, what is this super, super cool strap? So, the super cool strap that is on this is it's actually made by an uh, Italian manufacturer called uh, Bonetto Centurini. But this particular one is sold by Watch Gecko, which is a UK. Uh, Are you supposed to tuck it back in? I, I, I always tuck it back in uh, yeah. uh, a little bit. There's a way to do this in a more elegant way, uh, but uh, it's... Oh. Uh, it's. Uh, I'm a rough neck from Belgium. <laughs> yeah, well, Sorry, man. The, uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, it suits this watch uh, particularly well. The, the other point where people were, you know, a bit up in arms about this is like lug to lug is given at 52 millimeters or 51 and a half. But in reality, it, it's not the real lug to lug. It's a it's a lug to lug at the widest point of the watch. And right. if you were to take the when bracelet you off, you would see that it's not a square section. It's a bit rounded, and the round there just if you measured it really at the at the end of the lug, it's just under 50 millimeters. So the extra thing it's really go, going from from that um, rounded uh, the tip of the rounded uh, lug to 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 the other one. But I don't. I don't think it wears uh, massive. I mean, well, it's made to be a tool watch, visible underwater. If you want the daily, you get the 58, the Black Bay 58, and, it, and if you want the tool. Yeah. So, so this the does, story does, behind the look right, a bit they, bigger. They've got this collaboration with the French Marine Nationale, which is cool. And just to just to make things uh, accurate, this is not a watch that gets issued to the Marine Nationale. In a sense, it's not so, something that's supposed to go and get active service. The, the the combat swimmer, and it's important to, to say that it's combat swimmer, not combat diver, and this is something that the guys themselves correct every single time. Uh, they have the possibility of buying it from to, from, from Tudor at a, at a discounted price, mm. and it's got a slightly uh, uh, different dial where it only has a two line uh, there instead of uh, instead of four. Uh, on the civilian uh, uh, version, but fundamentally, when they did this collaboration, they went to the the combat the, the combat swimmers, and they say, if you were to make a watch that you can use for compass diving, um, what would it look like? And they said, all right, we would have the bidirectional uh, 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 bezel, we would have the countdown uh, bezel because the way that they're using this to dive is there are timing segment you know uh and they they want they want to to to, to a countdown for the segment that they're swimming until they have to change direction you know they, they do this typically with a with a, with a compass um, and uh and they came up with this and say yeah we don't need a bracelet for this uh, we'd much rather have a fixed duck because one, one less thing that can that can fail on the on the watch um they don't need uh nobody needs really uh, uh helium <laughs> Watch depth, they say 200 meters more than enough because, and that's because that's where the, the distinction between swimmer diver and, and swimmer diver. is important. Mm. These guys typically swim at between five and seven meters, just enough to not be detected. And in any case, in any case, they have special breathing system which recycles the air so you don't have any bubbles. But five, six meters is, is typically where in most waters you, you wouldn't you wouldn't really uh, see them and, and they never go go any 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 deeper than that their objective is to be able to cover actually quite long distances in a short period of time uh, so it's actually it's really physical what they're doing you know they need to be going at a pretty fast pace in order to be doing this they're great athletes you know stamina is off the chart uh, uh, good uh, for, for, for these guys, and if they were to try to dive uh, 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 deeper than the six seven meters, you would just naturally consume more air, right? 
and you you would run out of air much more uh, much more quicker because you dive at 10 meters you consume twice the amount of air than you would at five meters mm. that, that's how it works uh, so it, they have no point in having a super deep watch and like we were saying on the CQ, in any event, even really serious divers don't need anything more than 200 meters. Um, this debate about 300 meters is where it starts for professional watches is, is a bit ridiculous, really. Because if you really wanted to go to 300 meters, you would have to use a, decompre a decompression chamber. That there is no way you can dive like that just from the, from, from the surface, which by the, by the way makes the Seamaster 300M a lot more professional, quote unquote, than the Submariner, which is also at 300 meters, because again, with a 300M, you could go in a decompression mm. uh, chamber, whereas you couldn't do this. I mean, the, 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 the crystal would probably pop out on the, uh, on the, on the Submariner on the, way, uh, on, the way, uh, on the way up. But in any event, nobody dives in a decompression chamber. Nobody dives uh, extremely deep, uh, just for reference. When you do your paddy open water, which, which I did, is 18 meters is what, you, is what you dive. When you do your advanced, you are allowed to go, I think, up to 30 meters. 40 meters and beyond is considered deep diving. And that's generally the time when you, or the limit at which you start using special gases to go into the water. It's, 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 a, it's, it's, it's anything more than 40, 50 meters is, is really hazardous uh, at the at the best of time and uh, when we're talking about you know deep diving um, the world record for scuba diving from the surface down is around 340 meters right and it's held by an Egyptian uh, captain I think from the, the Egyptian Navy and that dates back to a few years now I think it's late 90s or early 2000s so he went there, so it took him 15 minutes to dive down to whatever, you know, 300 plus uh, meters. And it took him 14 hours to get back. 14 hours of decompression? Of decompression. He must have used, I, I don't know how many dozens of bottles uh, to at various stages to be able to do this. So this is just to put things in perspective when yeah, we talk about really that, right? So, so, yeah. so it's like this entire idea that, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, the divers are going to go there. No. Even when you're talking about people who are working on, on, on pipes, you know, at, at extreme depth, mm. you know, th they're going to go two, three hundred meters. I think the maximum that anyone ever went without having this kind of huge, uh, um, how do you say that in uh, scaphandre in, uh, in English? Well, these kind of rigid suits, you know, completely yeah. rigid suits, uh, which are not even uh, where you, you, you basically breathe uh, um, uh, non-pressurized air because it's sturdy enough that it's not getting crushed, right? Uh, but I think it was a COMEX did a mission and, then, and they went like 580 meters without having one of those suits. And I think that medically doctors are saying that past 600 meters, you start having irreparable tissue damage in your body. So when you when you when when people you know talk about you know the ludicrous stuff that you know Omega or Rolex come about that go you know six thousand meters or twelve thousand meters, it's 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 cool to know that it could, but it's of no practical use whatsoever. Uh, so it, yeah, if if you like something technical and it's your your thing, I mean by by all means. It is of no practical value uh, uh, at all. Uh, you get a 200 meters well built, you know that, or Seiko, or something else, and you you'd have uh, you'd have plenty. It's 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 enough. Uh, it's enough for that. So, yeah. So that's the reason why you know 200 meters. They say, yeah, look, it's it's more than enough. They wanted it in titanium, you know, because it's uh, it's it's light. Uh, you know, it's uh, you don't feel like you have an anvil on your uh, on your on your wrist. So collaboration with them, it, it's, a, it's a cool thing. It's not a military watch per se. They, they probably, they probably uh, use, you know, some, some you know, G-chocks or, mm -hmm. or, or quartz or whatnot, you know, watches to, to be able to do this. You know, I, th I think they also have a collaboration with Yema, uh, the, the Marine National. There's some uh, interesting Yema you can find. 
uh, including on their website. If you if you go on the Marine National website, which uh, I advise you do because have, they've got some cool stuff that you can buy, like uh, like knives, uh, like um, uh, cutlery, uh, clothes, uh, or you know, machetes, things you can use you, every day. You can't. You, you, so the, the things the, you can use right outside, actually here. Yeah, because this, this, is, jungle. this is this is proper jungle there. Uh, but no, it's uh, you can't you can't buy the the, the Tudor on their, their website. But I think you can buy the, uh, the, the the Yema on it if I'm not uh, if not if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I I, I just liked uh, the, the the watch. The fact that it's also it's pretty it's pretty thin, right? This is a twelve point seven millimeters watch, uh, so it, it's it, it fits under a cuff uh, relatively easily. And especially with this strap, which is not uh, which is not uh, the uh, the original strap, um, the original strap, which is in cloth and has a velcro on it, is is nice enough. But I, but I would be worried a little bit that if you used it in the water a lot, the velcro mm. is just going to start yeah. uh, failing uh, after a, a, a few months. Whereas that stuff there is extremely pliable. It's very thin. It's just one or one point two millimeters, meaning that it doesn't. It kind of disappears under the under the watch, right? It feels great, really feels super soft. Uh, one, one thing I noticed about the watch is how flat it looks and how everybody is very close, everything is very close to the crystal. Yeah, which, which, which was also the case on the, uh, on the, the first, uh, on the first uh, Pelagos that I own. It's just one of the characteristics of the, of the, of the watch. crystal and, yeah, the, the dial is just really, Close to the crystal there, as you can see, very short re, uh, reho, rehot. Oh, some people are, are also complaining about the fact that there, there was a much steeper reho uh, in the uh, in the in the original Pelagos, and they like that better. And to which I respond, get yourself the original Pelagos if you want to watch on a bracelet with the reho and yeah. the helium escape valve. You know, don't so not another off. one. Uh, a, 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 a new model just because it doesn't have that. The other thing I find very cool is the color of the blue. Yeah, it's a good color. Uh, because the Tudor, the, the, the masters of color, uh, they they give Rolex a run for their for its money. Well, you know, they're, they're known like for, for for blue divers, right? So so yeah. Rolex, except for what was the ridiculous name they gave it for the, the white gold one, the Smurf, the Smurf. Uh, did not did not do um, uh, blue divers. Uh, that was really what uh, what uh, Tudor was uh, was was known for. But uh, yeah, it's. Um, that particular hue of blue that you have there is actually um, French navy, if you believe it, uh, in in terms of how it is. Yes, cool. And, and if French you navy. if you compare that to true navy or Oxford blue, which is the same kind of very dark blue, which is just one shade before midnight blue, uh, it's it's um, it's a bit lighter in in column. It and is. you actually see it. I I have a picture somewhere. Uh, I, I might want to, to find it for you of uh, the French head of the Navy, an, ad, an admiral, uh, in a picture with his counterpart from the American Navy. And you can see that their suit, their uniform, the one the one on the American Navy is a dark blue that's almost black. And the one from the French Navy is, is, is a shade lighter, very close to, to this. So it's very, it's very specific, French Navy color which I like a, a heck of a lot better than the one on the, 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 the blue uh, Tudor Pelagos that's super saturated. You, you know the one, uh, uh, I mean, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the Pelagos comes in three different versions. Okay. There's, a, there's the black, there's the LHD, which is black with, uh, with uh, cream, cream indexes, mm -hmm. and then there's a blue one. Yeah. And the blue one has a very saturated uh, a blue, which I, which I find a little bit uh, jarring uh, at times. This is uh, this is a bit more discreet. It's 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 quite uh, quite understated. Uh, I I I like it a lot. There's no ear coating, but this color does a good job at uh, at not reflecting too much the the light. It looks good on the, on the video. No, it's it's uh, it uh, it's easy to wear. You know, it's uh, just so you know. You know, and, and uh, actually. Uh, one of uh, your viewers, Steve, so hello Steve, was asking the other day when you were, when you had your video about your Tudor in, um, in Thailand, he was asking, oh, could you compare, could, could you compare that to the Zen U50, you know, the FXD to the Zen yeah. U, U50. So there you've got both. And um, I'll say that uh, uh, about that. Um, 
the uh, the U fifty is a, is a far more competent uh, sport or or tool watch uh, by virtue of uh, you know using uh, submarine steel, which is uh, tougher than uh, than titanium. Um, actually, the titanium on uh, the um, on the FXD is grade two titanium, which is probably my only knock on this watch is frankly, at uh, 3000 plus dollars uh, a watch, I would expect a grade five titanium, which mm -hmm. is a high, no, no matter what people say, it's it's a higher grade of, 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 uh, of titanium. It's an alloy. Um, if you look at the hardness of, uh, of uh, a grade two, is about 160 Vickers when a stainless steel is about two, 220. So it's actually softer than stainless steel. Mm -hmm versus um, grade five titanium, which I think is around 300, 320. So it's markedly more. And submarine steel is, is, is 350. And to make matters even more on, on mine, I have the entire watch tegmented, which is this hardening. Uh, uh, Look, we have both in our hands. Can I start knocking yeah. them? And uh, I guess yeah, we're gonna yeah. see a big, big pit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so you start knocking yeah. against each other, uh, you, you know which watch is going to come on top and it's not going to be the Tudor. Let, let's sacrifice the one Tudor for, for science. Yeah, Are you yeah. ready? Are you ready? <laughs> uh, I think my, my son might have something to say about that. But um, yeah, so look, a gr grade two titanium, not, not my preference. Um, it's, it's really interesting when you start uh, talking about, you know, the materials in watches because that, bec that has become such a big selling point. Mm. and a way that watchmakers manage to get fatter margins. Uh, I'll give a few examples uh, 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 about this. Again, you know, a titanium, even grade two, is a, is a, is a great, uh, great alloy. You know, it's 40% lighter or 45% lighter than 904L or, or, or 316L, uh, but it's 20%, uh, 20% uh, softer. softer. But it means that you know weight to strength ratio is higher on uh, on titanium. It's got a lot of, of of interesting properties in the fact that it doesn't condu conduct heat uh, as much as metal. Meaning that if you pick your watch in the winter, it doesn't feel cold or it doesn't feel as feel as hot in uh, in the summer. So there's a lot of good things to say about uh, about titanium. Um, grade two, uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's still fit for purpose. The big thing they're saying, oh, it's more corrosion resistant than grade five. And when you look a little bit at this and we, when you ask people who actually know about metal, they say, yes, theoretically grade two is more corrosion resistant, but not in any environment where a human would survive. Okay. As if, if, if you were in a chemical processing plant, yeah, by all means use you, as a pipe, use a grade two, it's going to be That's better than grade five. My, or if you are typical uh, hangout on the weekend. Exactly. Or if you are in a desalination plant, you know, where the level of uh, the, the, the level of salt is sky high, where the flow speed is, is super high as well. Yes, grade two would be the better application. But just to go in, 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 the, oops, in the swimming pool or in the in the in the seawater, yeah. it makes no practical difference. <laughs> but Some, it sells, it sells watches. But it sells watches. So yeah. a good example of that means sometimes you do learn things on Hodinkee, even now, right? Um, a lot less since uh, Jack Foster uh, uh, left uh, uh, Hodinkee because he was kind of like the last interesting guy on that, uh, on that uh, you know, blog or channel or whatever they are these days. Um, but I was really interested at one stage in the um, in the Blancpain Batiscaf, um, uh, fifty fathom uh, Batiscaf, yeah. which is not which is not a well loved model, uh, but, but especially but it's also the also a great everyday diver. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's a bit big, right? It's forty three yeah. millimeters. It's not too thick. It's only thirteen and a half millimeters thick, which which is not a terrible, especially for a watch with one hundred and twenty. Uh, hours of, uh, of power reserve, super well finished. I, I really dig this watch uh, a lot. But the one I really like is the one in titanium. And the, the grade of titanium that, that they use for it is titanium grade 23. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, yeah, super corrosion resistant. And, and Hodinkee has an article about this. And down in the comment section, you go, you go, you go down and there was an actual metallurgist or two who started to chip in and say, yeah, guys, titanium 20, 
23 is basically a titanium grade 5 where they took a little bit of a little bit of iron and oxygen out of this and the idea is that it it is a bit more biocompatible meaning that if you were if you wanted if you you had to make an implant it would be more tolerated by the body so the only purpose of of grade 23 titanium for a watch would be if you were to have the watch grafted inside your wrist, your wrist inside instead of on top of the wrist but it helps them sell the watch you know at a, at a, at a higher price and, and and these guys were saying basically and saying and and one of them say oh it's a marketing thing don't even get me started on 904l versus 316l and one guy say well mind you please, you mind if i if i get please please, please, please tell us and and the guy was saying the same thing say look 904l would be great if you were to swim in acid because yes then it's more corrosion resistant than to acid attacks than 316l in any environment where a human would go it doesn't make any practical difference so but what you can do is you can polish it to a higher luster mm. which is the reason why basically rolex uses it because it makes their watch look a little bit more like jewelry not the tool watch that they're trying to sell you don't listen darling Again, it's just jealous. Yeah, completely jealous. Because as you know, I've never owned a Rolex in my life. Uh, so uh, the uh, no, so so it's really interesting. You know, the, these things. You could say the same thing about the uh, o Omega uh, three mass three hundred M uh, James Bond. You know, which is in titanium, mm. which they sell eighty percent more than the regular three hundred M. And people are saying, yeah, but you know, it's titanium, so you know, it's more expensive and it's, it's so much more difficult to cut and all that and, and to machine and the tooling and all that. And I'm like, an 80% markup <laughs> for just for the case for that? Because again, we, and, I, and again, it's a grade two, you know, it's not even a grade five, it's grade two. Right. So, so it's not even, it's harder than metal. The problem with, with, uh, with titanium comes from the property I was mentioning is the fact that it doesn't absorb heat as, as much. So when you when you work on it with a Dremel or anything else or, 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 or to carve it out, what would happen is the heat does not dissipate in the case itself, it would dissipate on the tool. Okay. So, so the tool, uh, um, you need to change so it. it. More uh, so you need more special tool and it breaks more often. But you're not going to tell me that, that the tooling that you need to use to cut a case is worth an 80% premium. That's marketing. That's because it's got James Bond on the watch. Uh, another example of this is when IWC came out a couple of years ago with a tribute to the 3705, you know, the, 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 um, uh, the one made out of ceramic. You know, uh, the, 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 the IWC Da Vinci and then Figa Chronograph 3705 were the first watches made out of ceramic, sometimes in the mid uh, to late to late 90s. So they came out with a tribute to that in 42 millimeters, which is fundamentally the same as their usual a Flieger chronograph. So I think it's 41 or 42 millimeters these days, um, but it's in, a, in ceramic and it has a dial and hands that is that are reminiscent of the 3705 that we presented on this channel, uh, because I've, I've got one of those. Yeah. And they sell it exactly twice the amount that they sell their their regular stuff. And then when you and then the spiel is to say yes, but it's ceramic and ceramic is more brittle. So therefore you have much higher failure rate in producing that. I'm like really twice as much just for the case, irrespective of the movement, the bracelet, and anything else. Just on the case, you really think that there's going to be a, a defect rate that is so huge that it's going to cost you twice the amount. And just for and just for memo, because I I still have the picture of a catalog of uh, IWC from the nineties, and they are showing the thirty seven oh five compared to the thirty seven oh six. So oh five in um, ceramic, oh six in stainless steel. The stainless steel version was four and a half thousand US dollars, and the ceramic one was just under 6,000. So that, that's a 30% yeah. premium for, for that. What, what they're trying to explain to us now, cost double, used to be 30% more. The other example you can get along those lines, you know, between uh, a stainless steel and a, and, um, and a titanium version is you get the, the Grand Seiko Snowflake. 
who everybody loves, yeah. uh, uh, obviously. The Snowflake, who is in grade five titanium, costs 20% more than the same model yeah. in stainless steel. So, so that's so so and, that's your, and with the amazing polishing, that and with the, you, the amazing you, polishing you and everything. So, so, so that's that, that that's 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 really what you should expect for this kind of quote unquote yeah. exotic material, 20 30 percent. Anything past that is you're buying marketing. So people just need to be aware of, of this. It's, it's not you're not getting any you know super special thing that justifies that you know. But you know, hey, the, the brands are happy because people people buy them. And honestly, if, if that's what you like and you're prepared to put that kind of money in it for for, for that, you know, power to you. Uh, I just wouldn't because I don't really see the value uh, for for the price difference. Uh, Zin, okay, Zin just came out with uh, with a new uh, T50, which is basically the same form factor as the U50, except that it's in titanium and it's got yeah. different hands and it doesn't have colorful accent. But now they're starting to lose me a little bit, uh, uh, Zin, because they're selling it at thirty eight hundred dollars versus just over two thousand US dollars for a uh, for the uh, for the U fifty, and I'm like, you know, I I, I like uh, the new T fifty by the way, but would I pay the extra money for titanium? And okay, give them credit, they also so have their technology, you know, anti humidity technology. You know, they have a capsule yeah. with a, a copper sulfide in it, which absorbs whatever kind of humidity would be in the case, and it has an indicator on the side that starts at white. But the more humidity it absorbs, the bluer it becomes, and when it's completely blue, it's it, it's time for you to change that that capsule. It's a cool thing to have. Do you really need to have this on a, on a dive watch? None of none of my have have them. I don't really need it. It's kind of a cool indicator. Again, it's a plus. But would I pay uh, that difference to have this and and the titanium? Probably uh, not. Plus the fact that I find it a little bit stern, the fact that they didn't put any color accent. Every time I looked at the pictures that they released, I'm like, is this a black and white picture? Because Do you, it, it's you know how much gray. color costs? <laughs> it's, it's, it's outrageous, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> no, but they could have done a cool thing. They could have the put- The price like, of a, color has- The pigments, <laughs> really yes. a lot, the pigmentation. Uh, yeah, they could have done it in blue, for instance. It would have kept it low key, but anyway, it's, it's a cool watch. But at close to at close to $4,000, would I, would I buy this over a Black Bay 58? Probably not. Hmm. Uh, I think you still have more value, even if it's, even if it's a tougher watch. You know, if it's a more competent yeah. sports watch than the, the the Black Bay 58. So, you know, uh, there's plus and minuses. It's great that there's innovation. It's great that they propose different versions. Uh, the price is uh, is debatable. You've understood by now which side of the argument uh, uh, I'm on. But you know, it's uh, it makes for cool watches. Well, at the end of the day, you speak with your money and you let the brand know what uh, what you're willing to pay. So, yeah, super cool presentation of the FXD. I'm glad to see it in, uh, in real good close up, taking our time with the uh, with the watch. I really like the, the angles here on the uh, on the piece and on the, the crown guard there. Yeah, it's nice. And what they've done is aligned perfectly, almost. Yeah, almost. it aligns perfectly. And what what they still do there. So obviously, it's not it's not it's not done with a with a with a with a bevel. You know, it's it's come it's coming in from the the case design itself. But the fact that you have this this bevel on the side is kind yeah. of cool because it's reminiscent of the vintage it's watches cool of old that that you know are. Uh, probably a, a, a bit more refined than uh, than some of the the, the more res recent uh, productions. How's the loom, by the way? Amazing. Yeah. So this is the, the bezel is loomed as well. Fully loomed as well. Um, this this lights up like a like a, a a Christmas tree in the in the dark, and that was also the case on my first Pelagos. I actually think that the the first Pelagos was even better because it had it was a green a green uh, hue. Yeah. And was super bright, and it lasted forever. This one lasts very, very long, but the level of brightness at first is not quite as as uh, as strong as it was on the on the older loom. This has kind of this, this kind, of kind of blue, right? Bluish loom that I'm looking that, under the table. That also, the by the way, the 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 CQ uh, has also this kind of, uh, well, of, it's of, like of the, blue. The, it's like the Rolex blue. It does. It's not a big flash like a Seiko, no, no, no. but it lasts uh, a nice hue. I quite like blue room. 
yeah they're, they're cool so this is this is fantastic talking about talking about uh, uh, visibility in the dark the one that I was actually surprised by positively is uh, my Speedmaster yeah yeah it, it, it's remarkably legible yeah, after a few hours in the dark so of course the intensity decreases uh, quickly after five seven minutes but then it stays there for a very long time yeah although it's uh, applied on very thinly yes it's I always found it to be very beautiful and lasting all night yeah uh, I'm a loom maniac and wake up five times a night just to look at my loom so I can tell you that uh, I, I'm a bit like you, but probably <laughs> but I, you know, especially having had a, a boy less than a year ago, when I when I managed to get some sleep, I I, <laughs> I like to not uh, wake up just to watch my my the, the loom of my watch, but it's uh, no the, the, that that that's that that's a great job on the on the Tudor. It's a great job on the on the Seamaster. The CQ has a very good loom as well. I was actually really mm -hmm. pleasantly surprised how how good it was. The U50 is very good as well. So the U50 yeah. doesn't glow very bright at first when you charge it, but it lasts very very long and remain, remains legible after four, five, six hours in the, mm. in the dark. It's a very it's a very good loom. So for me, you know, having a modern watch. Is, is what kind of what I expect, you know. I I want something yeah. that's functional, you know. Otherwise, but to otherwise me, no, I loom, the reason why I talk about loom at night all the time is because when you wake up and you don't know what time it is, and it's like five a.m. Sometimes you're, you're just thinking, is it worth just getting up and uh, or is it worth falling asleep again? To me, that's functional. It's a little extra. That's why I sleep with the the watch on. Yeah. And, uh, it's five thirty. Nah, maybe I just get up and start working. But no, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great thing. The 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 uh, to to have this. Uh, um, also, we were talking about depth a bit, and uh, and you know, two hundred meters versus two thousand meters, and and whatnot. I think in general people worry too much about depth, and not enough about magnetism, because we're surrounded by magnets uh, all the time. No. Uh, the your 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 phone's a magnet, your computer's a magnet, your tablet's a magnet. I'm a magnet. Yeah, but you're you're a bit more of a for weird, trouble. You know, <laughs> I was going to say something more polite, like women, uh, but uh, maybe that's trouble. But uh, the uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, which is f for me, having a, a Metas uh, certification is is actually a big a, a big plus. Like for instance, having a, a Metas certification on the yeah. uh, on the C on the on the Speedmaster, which I wear uh, a lot, is is a real plus because I know that even if I leave it next to my mobile phone. Uh, during the night, uh, it's yeah. not going to get magnetized, you know, in the, in the same way others uh, others would. It is what should, yeah, you're right. It is what should make people feel more comfortable on a daily basis, you know. Uh, what about this one? Does it have special uh, properties from the the titanium? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I actually, I don't, I don't know whether uh, titanium has got uh, a better anti-magnetic property. I think it does, but I'm I'm not sure that it, it enough to make a difference. I know. The U50 that, does, huh? That the U50 the does. I know that submarine steel, steel yeah. is amagnetic, so you're very, you're uh, much more unlikely to get it magnetized than uh, than uh, than a regular one. Um, but you know, it's it's still it's still a good it's still a good tool. I just I mean, I I've, I've I I swim with this. I've yeah. uh, I've played tennis with this. I I should mention as well that I've got a one-handed backhand, meaning that it never yes. gets any shock. Uh, from from Likewise. hitting a ball, so I'm just basically running with the watch. Is is is, yeah. is all I do. And you'd you'd hope that uh, that uh, a sports watch you can you can still run with it. And it's well, it's made for diving. You're not really moving much. Actually, you move very very slow uh, typically with uh, with these yeah, watches. But you know, again, you know, if you're talking about a, a speedmaster. It's supposed to. Does to... the watch wind underwater? Last I checked, gravity still worked underwater, so I'm pretty sure it does. Yes, your movement might be slower, but <laughs> the, might, the watch will wind. Yes. Uh, so, oh, by the way, the Tudor ceramic, Blapé ceramic, has the Meta certification. If you're worried about uh, about about it, yeah, uh, there's an option there from uh, from Tudor. Yes. Yeah, so so. Uh, yeah, and I think Tudor did it just to show Omega that they could do it. You know, what, whatever you do, we can do as well. So. Yeah, uh, I'm I, wondering I what this year they're going to come up with. Are they going to, to me, they should double down on that one and uh, put a GMT uh, in it. All blacked out, black and gray, uh, bezel. No, no, you know what I would nice. like? I would like their, what's the name of that ridiculous super deep watch of the, the, James, the James Cameron yeah. thick thing that is 23 millimeters thick. You know the 15 millimeters watch, which the is the new Rolex. Yeah, the new Rolex. 
Yeah, the, the uh, challenge, deep sea challenge. The deep sea challenge. I want this with the GMT function. <laughs> yes. Or, 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 or better, a yeah. perpetual calendar. Yeah. Perpetual calendar would make more sense. Yeah. And, and you know, you know that thing come out and I had a chuckle because it's so, it's, it's so outrageous, right? 50, mini, 50 millimeters uh, 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 diameter, 23 millimeters thick. And I knew, and I knew that the moment it came out and, and I was a chuckle, I was like, you can't wear this if you're a human. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how big you are. Yeah. Um, and I knew that someone was going to try it or buy it and say, it is surprisingly yeah, surprising. wearable when in reality, no, it's, it's like you were, it's like the time when you were 11 years old and you were wearing your daddy's shoes. That, that's what it looks like on, on anyone's wrist. Except Andre the Giant. Okay. For, for right. those who remember the WWF. Yeah, may, maybe Andre the Giant, but you know, probably you need to be his size to, to even consider but this. But that, that watch is, uh, the, is made to be outside of the device that's going to go the submarine that's going to go all the way to the bottom of the Yeah, so what's trench, the point, right? right? It's not meant to be worn on anyone. No, but you know, you, you know the thing is like that, and by the way, credit to Cameron to go down that deep because it's still hazardous, you know, even in that super high-tech boat yeah. and whatnot. But if could, he could have gone there with a the Calatrava on, right? Because yeah. he, would, he was inside a, 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 right. a, 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 a small submarine where it was so... It was so resilient it's, it's that that, that um, the way they designed it is like he wasn't even breathing pressurized air. It was it was like normal air that he was uh, breathing inside that thing. So Crazy. again, you could have gone there with my uh, longer eighteen fifteen, and it but would have made the concept of that deep sea challenge and the ultra deep of uh, Omega is not to be warm. Hello. Hey, yeah, hello. In the beach. I bring already this lucky boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have a good nap? Say so we no. say hi to to Junior. <laughs> Looking good, boy. Look, this is your watch. Daddy says it's yours. Do you want to take it to the beach? <laughs> Not just yet. Okay, let me just go. All right, so Junior just woke up from his nap. Yes, so so uh, uh, so yeah, FXD. Uh, yeah, so super, super beautiful, uh, beautiful, cool watch, huh? Yeah, super beautiful, and you know what's what's interesting? Everybody was like, "Ah, oh, it's so difficult to get," and all that. You, you know how long it took me to get that? Three days. Yeah, three days. I uh, I went again. You know, we talked about it in the previous video. Yeah. I went to my friend Marianne. And I said, Marianne, could you get me a Tudor FXD? And yeah. she got me one. The price list in Hong Kong is thirty thousand US dollars. I got it for 29, so I even got it a, a little bit below uh, uh, with, the price list. When, uh, when my, my friend Ben is really gonna, uh, is really gonna hurt because he had to pay an upcharge to get <laughs> his, and like a month later, I, I was in a, in Hong Kong here in Hong Kong, and I, and I see one in the window at a discount. I'm like, oh, what did you pay for yours? And now it's in every AD window. And, uh, I, I, I find it very rarely though. I, I, I'm not sure I've even seen it. At a, at I've seen it in a few in a few windows you, and uh, yeah. like pretty much everything. The only thing I haven't seen is the new 39 Pelagos. I haven't either. I've been looking for this one. I, I'm looking to just to I would just want to see it once, but I find it a bit bland, you know, especially after this, which has a lot of the Tudor charm. I, I, I think I think like for what you need to see it for yourself yes. uh, to, 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 to make yeah, a any watch, opinion. Huh? You gotta, yeah, you gotta any see watch, it you yourself. Know, there, sometimes you have a, a good surprise, sometimes you have a bad surprise. Uh, yeah, try 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 them. You know, it's like a, it's like, you know, the Black Bay Pro. You know, and I know you used to own yeah. this watch and you liked it and, and all of this. I absolutely lo love the, the 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 looks of it. But then I uh, and then I looked at the uh, at the at the specs and I was like, damn, it's almost fifteen millimeters uh, mm. thick. And then I w then I went to to an AD because it was it was it was never very difficult to find. They were they were in the stores no. very very quickly, and I put it on my wrist and said, no, that 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 just that height doesn't do it for me. I, I love the looks uh, 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 of it. Yeah. I, I love the fact that it's like a modern take on uh, on the Rolex one six five five. You know the color coding and and all the rest of it. But I, this is just too thick, and and also I I don't want to reward Tudor for being lazy and not and not doing uh, a movement that was thinner uh, uh, for this watch um, I, you know this watch I kind of, kind of splits the opinion because some people say 
yeah but i don't know if it's not a problem for for me and fine if it's not a problem mm. for them for me for me it, it was a, it was a, a, an issue at the time but teddy balasar uh, had an interview with the designer of that watch they say hey look great job and all that but some people say it's a little bit thick yeah. and the guy basically responded point blank say look I had to do with the movement they gave me to yeah. work with. Like you give me a fat movement, you get a fat watch. Yeah. You know, implied. You know, if if if, if you'd gave, given me a thin movement, I, I'd have produced or I'd have designed a thin watch. But that's but the thing with Rolex, and that's the thing with the Daytona, the GMT, is that they're flat, and yeah. then they wear so well, and it's just it just comes down to half a millimeter. Uh, once you get above twelve, it's uh, it's fat, and once you get above, and for a dress watch, once you're above ten, yeah. it, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, oh, for, for, for me, for me, I, I, I've kind of, kind of evolved a little bit on this. Yes, for me, it's the same thing as you, dress watch, you know, 10 and under. And then for me, a sports watch, 13 is, is really where I am. Mm. The reality is my, 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 my Speedmaster is 13 and a half. And it's just at the limit where I, yeah, can, but the I can fit it under case my... case is my, thin, uh, you have the liar lugs, they, they hide the... Uh, while well, Tudor never tried to hide the, the thickness, it's, the, it's part yeah. of the look, especially the, the, the Black yeah, Bay, even and, more and, than this. And, and, a, and, a, and a Speedmaster has a light, especially a lot of the yeah, thickness yeah. is a crystal itself. Yeah. Like it's, it it's you, 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 shave, you shave a half millimeter just by getting the, uh, the, the Sapphire crystal. Uh, uh, version versus the the hazelite. Yeah, um, I don't think you should count the the, the crystal. In, uh, no, no. It, it, visually, it, it's not there. Yeah. So, so, but, but you know, Tudor. Yeah. Look, I I love what they've done. Like everybody else, I love what they've done with the Black Bay Fifty Eight, which is, in terms of proportion, absolutely magical. I think it's. it's yeah, just but it works because there's no date, right? And uh, if they were yeah, doing yeah. a manual wine version, it would be even uh, thinner. That's uh, yeah. So 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 there's that. Yeah. But uh, you know, but but for me, I'm I'm kind of like you know, even if you make a watch that is that has good water resistance, even if you make a watch that has a GMT function, sorry, 15 millimeter, th there's no reason for that, right? Yeah. So they say, oh yeah, but there's 70 power hours power reserve and all. Oh, that. The, the the reality is that for 70 hours of power reserve. You probably need a, a movement that's a bit wider because you need a, a, a wider barrel yeah. to put the spring. Maybe marginally thicker, but not 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 drastically thicker than that. So for me, if you take a watch and then you take the GMT version, I'm prepared to go one millimeter more just to put the 24-hour hand right. So yeah. so if a watch if a if if a watch was 12 millimeter and then they do a GMT version and they say hey, uh, then keep it within 13 millimeters just just for that. But but this thing that it, it, it needs to be that thick because it's got a GMT function, and it's really an area where I'm like, why is no one doing this? Like for instance, uh, Grand Seiko came out with uh, a bunch of new GMT watches, very beautiful by the way. One that has a bit of a snowflake type yeah. uh, dial as well, thirteen point seven or thirteen point eight millimeters. I'm like. It's just a millimeters too thick. I'd, I'd buy that watch if it wasn't if, if it was under under thirteen millimeters, but that's a bit too close I've to. I've said that many many times at the Grand Seiko shop. Uh, since we're talking divers and GMTs and, and functions, the Marine Master two hundred. I saw that. In coming in GMT, and what I love is that the GMT uh, uh, graduation is inside the rehort. Yeah. But you have a diving bezel, so you can time things, you have your GMT that everybody loves, uh, really cool, and it's a beautiful case. I've owned that watch uh, without the GMT. I uh, fell in love with the case because it just works great on the uh, on the wrist. As usual with Seiko, I'm excited when I get them and then I never wear them. <laughs> but uh, I'm looking forward to see that one. And uh, I too, I saw I saw that release. The green, was, the black, yeah, the uh, prospects, light uh, blue dial. Yeah, pr prospects. So there were two or two hundred meters water resistance. Right? My guy so says it's coming in June only, but surprising they would announce it so so long in advance. It's it's a great model that, and twelve point seven millimeters thick. So there you have it. Yeah. You have a you have a dive watch that has a GMT function and it's less than thirteen millimeters. Boom. Tudor, why can't you do that? You know the other ones who need to do something, and, and and I find it so incredible that they don't have even a half decent offering for that is Omega. Where yeah. are you in the GMT space? Because the only one you can find these days is if you have a Planet Ocean, 
and it's going to be like 16 millimeters yeah. uh, 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 thick if you a want. weapon yeah if, exactly so so yeah you kill a bear with that yeah. uh the the so 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 there's a a, a huge gap i think in their line i'm like everybody wants a, a Rolex gmt master nobody can get it at least price um but you have like this this goal wide open and you don't put the ball uh in the back of the net why wouldn't you do that you know and keep it keep it within 13 millimeters you know if, if maybe you glass shoot uh, original original will uh could come up with with something Jezer, they can make any movement. But, but, I, but I think why, why can't Jezer do a, a, a nice diver with GMT and, and a chronograph and a perpetual calendar? Well, they have, haven't they? They, 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 they had, they, they had, they had, but they were those uh, huge. Uh, oh, but there's, hang on, there, there, there's one huge watches. Th 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 there's one from uh, from uh, from GLC, which has a. Um, uh, uh, it's one of their. What's what's. What, what's the name of their dive watch? The memo box or the um, well, anyway, that that line, the divers, and uh, and they've come up with them in with a with a perpetual a diving watch with a perpetual calendar, uh, which are, which actually to, which to is actually uh, which is actually I mean it's it's one of those watches. I mean perpetual calendar, you have a lot of functions in in a watch like that. Yeah. So to put that in a dive watch, and I think it's only around the thirteen millimeters uh, high. So look again. I give them points for effort. I don't quite understand the concept of a perpetual <laughs> calendar underwater, but that's just because we can me. make it. Uh, yeah. Which is the whole point of a watch. Uh, Blancpain did this on the the body scarf as well. They have a body scarf uh, perpetual, uh, 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 or, no, not perpetual, uh, annual calendar. And I think that the the I'm not sure that the uh, that the Jezer Le Coutre is a perpetual calendar or an annual calendar. But regardless, it's uh, it's it's interesting that they would even do these things. All right, well, that's it for the the Tudors. I think next we're gonna talk about uh, straps, maybe. Yeah, about straps. That. Yeah. Everybody loves a good strap. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs>